Here we have 6.6 .6, rationalizing a denominator. So now we're gonna get start rationalizing and we have a quotient involving square roots. So first you would try to simplify these, but square root of seven and square root of five will not um, simplify. So then the next thing you wanna do is rationalize. Rationalize means that you will no longer have a square root in the denominator, okay? And how do we get rid of square roots in the denominator? The only way to get rid of a square root is to have a square, right? Because squares and square roots undo each other. So what you want to do is you want to have square root of 5 squared down here so that the 5 could come out of the house and then there would be no more house. Well, in order to do that, I would have to multiply by square root of 5. Then I would get the square root of 5 squared or the square root of 25 and the square root of 25 is just 5. And then no more house being in the denominator anymore. Okay, that's the goal. You want this square root to be gone in the problem. But if multiplying by a square root of five was what I needed to make that square root house go away, you have to remember that when you have a fraction, you can't change this ratio. So if you multiplied by something at the bottom, you're going to have to multiply by that exact same thing to the top. So that you're really just multiplying by a really confusing looking one, which doesn't change the value. It might make the value look different, but it doesn't change the value to begin with, okay? So when I have a radical times a radical, I'm gonna multiply those insides, and then I don't believe the square root already will reduce because it came from two prime numbers, um, and it's actually 35, I think, right? Seven times five is not 30. Seven times five is 35, and the square root of 35 does not simplify. And so that's all we needed was for that denominator to no longer have a square root in it. So similarly, we're gonna do the same for B. So I have the square root of three. I'm going to need another square root of three so that I end up with the square root of nine, which just ends up being a three without the square root. Then whatever I do to the bottom, I've gotta to do to the top. So this becomes nine on the outside and square root of three. So I can't simplify any further, it just stays like that. But I can simplify the nine and the three. Nine divided by three is three, and then I no longer have a fraction there. And so this is the simplified answer. Over here for part C, it's the same thing. I need another two, so square root of two times square root of two. We end up with the big two on the outside and then square root of six. Here we end up with the square root of four. You cannot simplify the square root of six, but you can simplify the square root of four. And then these two will both reduce, leaving you with just the square root of six. Now here, this is not the problem. The three is not the problem. It's the two that has the radical on it. So we need another two. Square root of two, square root of two. So I get square root of 10 in the numerator, and then I get three times, or three square root of four. So then I have square root of 10 over three times the square root of four is two. So we have the square root of 10 over six as our final answer.